So thank, first of all, thanks for joining in uh, for this wonderful event. And I hope everybody is safe uh, in this pandemic time and at home and working your, you know, taking care of your daily activities, working across from home itself. Stay safe. Okay, so just to start with the session uh, today, uh, as part of this event, I have, will be covering a small uh, presentation on how we can use federated learning in a connected car scenario and how we can use that uh, in an era where 5G is bringing a lot more communication at my devices. So the whole idea, uh, so before I get into the agenda, let me just introduce myself. My name is Anurag Agarwal, and I am currently working as solution architect with Tata Consultancy Services in India, Hyderabad. And I am taking care of uh, multiple initiatives uh, in my center of excellence with respect to 5G and how we can use those 5G technologies in different uh, industry segments, be it smart manufacturing, be it vehicles, be it uh, automobiles and uh, different aspects. So, but my out of my personal interest, uh, uh, automotive is one of the areas which I keep focusing on. And we have also, you know, developed multiple uh, uh, reference use cases. I'll not say industry level use cases, but reference use cases to showcase the capability of AI and ML and how that can be leveraged in industry. <clears throat> so as part of the today's discussion, uh, we will be briefly touching upon what is 5G and how what is uh, 5G V2X connectivity and how does it help you uh, connect vehicles to the network and what kind of messages they can exchange. And uh, we will be talking about uh, autonomous vehicles and connectivity, connectivity requirements. What are, what are they imposing on the network? Then we will be briefly touching about the federated learning, the challenges, some open source frameworks. And then I will be coming to a small architecture uh, where we, we see that how a 5G along with my AI and Edge, how will that will fit into a, my network going ahead? <laughs> and how will these technology will be you know, leveraging each other across to create an end-to-end -end use case, more intelligent, more autonomous use case. That's something I will try to you know, highlight and touch upon that. And at the end, I will just uh, briefly touch explain one of my use case that we have uh, you know, implemented in my labs, and then I will be open for question, answer, question and answers. But feel free to uh, you know, drop, drop any questions in the chat box, uh, question and Q&A chat box. I will uh, take up as and when I can you know, uh, take them up. Now, <clears throat> so quickly starting to it. So how do we typically see uh, you know, automobile? Uh, the back, like two decades back, until two decades back, when we talk about an automotive is a standard, you know, geared or non-geared cars with basic functionalities and some certain automation features like cruise controls or so, you know, uh, certain certain controls within within the driver's seat. Then the era came of the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 3G and 4G. We started getting some sensors on my devices, like GPS, onboard sensors. There's certain onboard sensor way which can started helping my driver's assistance. So basically what happened is it started giving me a certain level of automation with conditional autom autonomous. Where when I say conditional autonomous, it, which means uh, <clears throat> it needs certain driver assistance along with certain functionality being offloaded to the device. In this case, when I say device, in this case, I'm talking about the automobile. So it can be a device, uh, certain you know, activities are being performed by vehicles, but under the guidance of the driver. Now, then the era is what I call it today's era, where we are leveraging 4G and 5G to, to create a next generation uh, vehicles. Autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles are the talk of the town. Everybody's talking about that. There are a lot of companies, all big names are working on it. A couple of them has done their test drives. A few of them has also launched on road, but unfortunately, it's not foolproof yet because it, there's a long way to go. 
and what what is making that happen is the compute the low cost of compute when i say low cost of compute means i have the compute has become so cheap that i can bring that on board on my device itself i can you know not only just rely on the data from my sensors which is there in my vehicle but i can also connect to the network and get some relevant information and then take a decision so i have huge amount of on board compute i have hundreds of sensors on my you know uh, vehicle then i have cameras high precision cameras which can you know can be my third eye a uh, driver's third eye and eventually that will be the only eye of the vehicle so the idea is can i eventually you will see a lot of you know processing uh, your your vehicle is known as in a computer eventually so now okay now when i this is what we are, we we have it we are in research in today and this will be further even uh, evolve it will further evolve uh, as the technology evolve as we achieve more and more optimization so this will eventually evolve but what is another key factor here is to make it happen is other along with my all board sensors and on board compute is the communication so what 5g is bringing you what 5g is typically promises promises is a high very high bandwidth ultra low latency and very high uh, reliability so with this promises it becomes very evident that this these technologies uh, specifically with 5g that that can be leveraged in vehicles but as part of this endeavor what uh, the standard bodies has started doing is they have you know specifically started customizing my 5g stack to support vehicles so at along with so, so for that what they've done is they have started you know study multiple use cases so if if my two vehicles have to communicate with each other how will they do that if i have my vehicle has to communicate to a pedestrian walking the road or a cyclist who's you know going on a cycle or or to uh, infrastructure what kind of a different changes would be required <laughs> at the same time it is also trying to not just connect between vehicles it is also trying to look at if i have if my vehicle has to connect to a network and get uh, get some uh, information from from uh, uh, my cloud in servers or somewhere around that what would it take to do, uh, to to you know enhance my stack in such a way that i should be able to support that along with my regular uh, emdb traffic so with this now they have already defined that uh, so the, they they started with d2d technology uh, way back like a couple of years back which they further enhance it to make it specifically for uh, vehicles now what happened is this this vehicle has evolved in release 14 which is a previous release and release 15 which is a 5g release now it has come up to a stage where it can uh, i can say it can, it can be adopted by a uh, different industry uh, vehicle industry segments now <clears throat> the kind of use case that we will we have already started seeing right i should not say we will because a couple of them has already been you know uh, experimented along uh, they have been you know tried on or they have a lot lot of uh, it, trials are going around the world so one of them very interesting which i find myself is intelligent traffic routing where you can uh, you know if i can manage my traffic considering that all the vehicles are either connected or autonomous uh, my vehicle i should be able to route my traffic in such a way that a minimal traffic jams i can lower my carbon footprints i can you know uh, ensure my emergency vehicles are on uh, reach a destination on time so when i come to emergency vehicle that is one of the use cases which i will probably be showcasing towards the end of for this presentation uh the second kind of use case which uh, are very prominent i briefly touched upon uh, was autonomous vehicle with onboard intelligence my vehicle can think of itself it has its own brain now 
and then the real time info infotainment where you have you know you can have a live tv in the in, in a vehicle all the entertainment kind of you know scenarios where you you don't really need to use your mobile but you have that kind of a connectivity inbuilt in your vehicle so that 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 make uh, the communication connectivity a low low latency and high reliability communication connectivity a, a very important factor to for this this industry to evolve <laughs> now with when when we talk about autonomous or autonomy in vehicles we we briefly spoke about like what are the different use cases so at the same time uh, what does it bring in what kind of expectation does it have from the network though 3gpp and other standards bodies are working to go towards to make it happen and try to to you know bring in that kind of a uh, or achieve the requirements what they are imposing on us but if you look at just to just to you know give that kind of an uh, feel i just put together a few numbers uh, which which can help us understand the kind of requirement that we are looking at so for example uh, for a use case of vehicle polluting now uh, they need so when when we talk about vehicle polluting uh, uh, platooning sorry platooning not not plat my bad uh, so what they do is they vehicle one is moving in the front and vehicle two is moving the back following the vehicle one so in this case the latency is very important because as soon as this guy breaks this should be able to uh, break immediately without you know hitting that uh, vehicle so so they're looking at very low latency of 10 milliseconds or maybe lesser than that the reliability has to be minimum of 94s and data rate has to be very high because they will be exchanging huge amount of data to ensure that they are not going to collide in under any circumstances similarly when in advanced driving scenarios you you have much lower latency required you have in remote driving similarly in the remote driving say somebody is driving from some uh, remote location you need much more uh, uh, reliability and much higher reliability which, will, which should be around 5 6 or sorry 5 9s or 6 9s similarly but but again sorry uh, unlike other use cases where downlink data is key uh, in this case in remote driving uplink data is another key requirement when i say uplink uh, data which means the data being sent by the vehicle towards the network is also very important typically what happens is downlink is higher and uplink is slower but in this case what they expect is uplink has to be higher because along with getting instruction it is also sending huge amount of data towards the server so that the uh, the uh, remote assistance or remote remote uh, person sitting in the remote site should be able to get all the you know sensor data in real time and should be able to act on, on it then at this certain other use cases like public safety uh, city infrastructure and connected vehicles are also imposing similar kind of uh, <coughs> requirements on on the network now uh, i'm sure couple of you has must have seen similar kind of uh, an architecture for onboard connectivity in in an autonomous vehicles where you have you will be having a high performance compute uh, with cpu and rams along with my gpus fpgas and dsps because that is one of uh, you know conventionally also they have been the faster uh, processing uh, uh, faster processors than cpus and ram uh, and on top of that, then you will be having mm, your uh, some some operating system. In this case, uh, we, we what we had in our lab is AutoGrid Linux, uh, which we use to uh, create our own uh, a small proof of concept or prototype for that. Then uh, the then you will have so some edge platform now I'll, I'll come to that what edge platform uh, when i say edge platform what does it mean here but but uh, before going to that let me also touch upon on these input sensors typically what you have you have multiple input sensors we talked about that and then you have a collection engine which collect this sensor data 
at a you know predefined frequency and then it will send to the telematics engine analytics engine and then based on certain decisions it takes uh, based on my rule engine and my certain decisions it will go and take or assist my driver or my autonomous car to to perform uh, multiple actions now this is something which will run inside the vehicle but at the same time to take this decision intelligently more precise decision it needs certain data from outside world so for that we will we have started seeing that 5g modem or 4g modem i mean uh, for 5g connectivity has started you know getting a space in this on entire architecture now coming back to what device edge platform here means this this device edge platform means i should be able to write certain applications not just one time one it should it, it helps you make a flexible architecture where i have the flexibility of deploying multiple more applications on on board and take care of data plane movement rather than you know uh, a fixed uh, implementation i have more flexible implementation so this this gives you a certain you know flexibility of taking care of life of life cycle management of uh, these application be it remotely or be it locally that depends on the kind of uh, compute i have on this uh, platform <coughs> so so uh, now what what uh, now this is this is the overall architecture but now another key aspect which i want to highlight here is again i rather i should say highlight here is the 5g uh, connectivity now what does it mean uh, what does it do for you it brings in the direct or indirect communication with the network uh, it helps you you know uh, exchange my sensor data towards a network or even receive to uh, those sensor data from nearby vehicles or from the network sorry okay uh, so uh, now let's let's typically uh, no let, let's touch upon uh, this the intelligence building block uh, so let me just go back to the previous screen for a moment so in this screen that you see that we, we talked about this intelligent applications analytics engine and telematics engine so what does it uh, i will just try to expand that in little more uh, so in this case what we're saying okay what we typically have is you sense the some data then you identify what kind of an object what are the different attributes from these sensors and then you create a perception okay uh, you create a model you 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 for example if i have to track an object or for for in the case of a vehicle polluting uh, i am supposed to follow an object in front of me so it it, it recognizes this object it start tracking it it creates a model and ensure that what are the different parameters i need to ensure that i i am in in uh, certain distance to them i am am i getting all the parameters of them then it creates based on this perception it takes a certain decision it defines its path it defines its uh, you know location and speed and everything it can take control of that now <clears throat> as we saw in the previous slide uh, i spoke about the edge compute platform now this this is what it does it brings in for you it gives you surrounding awareness based on intelligent sensors object classification hardware and hardware compute but at the same time i see them as challenges as well when i say challenges because the more you from if you look especially if you look from an automotive industry the more you or the more precise uh, you you want or precision you want in this case you have to have a high compute blocks on your vehicles which means the cost will go high eventually and you need more power too so your your power requirements goes high your cost goes high and then your uh, maintenance goes high because then you have to ensure uh, there is software upgrades this risk of security 
so that so to take care of those things we have to you know uh, ensure that we, we have a balance between them similarly with network compute uh, network, network com sorry network connectivity and edge compute you do get a network awareness you do get context aware decision making capability and you do get a high reliability network but at the same time going back to my previous thing is the security is one of the biggest challenge which poses a huge risk in in uh, you know achieving a full autonomy <clears throat> typically what happens is you have certain uh, with ai ml what you have is you have certain business rules which you apply on your devices it sends the training data sets onto my storage server onto the my cloud which has a storage server my algorithm running and it it optimizes your models and weights and it sends you back but what we typically see is who is doing the entire heavy weight lifting is my this communication channel and my compute on the cloud but with reduced cost so so how how we can uh, with sorry so with reduced cost i can technically you know ship some of these heavy weights onto the devices so for that i think federated learning is one of the key concepts uh, is again it's no different than ai ml but just a different way of you know, uh, implementing uh, my ml algorithms so it talks about a uh, how you train your algorithms on a decentralized architecture so where are we talking about okay i have a centralized server which can do all my heavy lifting part but at the same time when i have enough compute so can i offer part of that on my way on my device rather than doing all the computation here and then sending sending the model back to them so the idea is offload part of it here on these devices so that they can take their own care of the compute of their own part and then sends the only the new optimized model on on the cloud so that which which it can call collate and then sends back to everyone so now everybody has a global data global model but what they are working on is only the computation for the local data right so let me say we saw this slide where we say okay all this compute uh, <coughs> sorry uh, just give me a water break So what we saw is in the previous slide that this entire heavy weight lifting has been done by that. But what I explain this thing is okay. I have you know offload some of the compute on the device itself so that I'm not sending the entire training data set on the server. I can reduce the uh, you know load on my communication channel, but it, it helps me reduce the overall. Uh, bandwidth requirement of my communication channel and at the same time it will ask each device dev devices to do some kind of a uh, heavy lifting part of it which will be much smaller from the, from the, that device perspective so in overall sense i'm still running a similar kind of an architecture but i have you now offloaded some part of it here and and without without compromising on their uh, you know the model or the, the the performance of the algorithms or the optimization part of it with, without impacting that but federated learning comes with certain challenges uh, now as we see uh, in in an iot world or or in a in a in an era where all my devices are getting connected <coughs> the number of devices will be huge enormous so we are talking about multi millions and multi billions of devices so with that what does it mean even with this approach there will be huge amount of data on the network so we have to ensure that the the uh, the balance between my communication uh, the, the network uh, sorry the balance between 
the kind of data that we are transmitting from my devices or the models or how do we design that that has to be taken care even with that kind of a bandwidth which 5g is going to provide us that might not be enough in future again the privacy concern is one of the biggest concern because uh, though it helps you you know take you know uh, store the data locally but at the same time uh, you know you have to ensure that your model is secure you should not somebody who's fishing out in the network should not be able to you know fish out your so your the network security is at most important uh, right so another important factor is the network uh, or system heter uh, heterogeneity so uh, like i said like now we are going to have huge number of uh, devices but those devices will be of different you know uh, make different purpose they might not be all of them might not be a, a, a vehicle so they may have more, i can i can have an out of home automation i can have uh, a factory automation or 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 a street light but on a street light you can't have uh, you know huge compound uh, compute there similarly you will, you will have you know few devices which can support huge compute because they have that kind of a power uh, support they have that kind of a space to add that kind of uh, or uh, compute there but there are certain devices which cannot so so system heterogeneity is not so it's, i cannot say that my federated learning algorithm will work in all, all the con conditions and another very important uh, challenge which we see is the statistical heterogeneity now since all those devices which will be generating this data will not be in the same format they will not be in a similar kind of an architecture so how do i take care of that part if i have to create an algorithm if i have to you know distribute my uh, heavy lifting part to my different devices how do i get that all of them should be able to send a similar kind of a model so that my my uh, server or my centralized unit should be able to you know collect them all create a generic global model and send them back so for that uh, before i before i jump to that but let me quickly touch upon the for the different open source uh, uh, frameworks which are available uh, right now this is just a very small list of it there couple of more which are being used by different you know uh, organization developers and uh, but but uh, few of them which i have personally used and have touched upon them is the pytorch since uh, tensorflow uh, and keras uh, uh, so these are the ones which are being used as i have been reading very recently that pytorch is one of the most you know uh, favorite uh, are getting the favorite spot with automotive industry they're trying to see if pytorch can be used i uh, they find more useful in terms of you know designing the algorithms for uh, automotive industry use case whereas tensorflow vc has a, a huge amount of libraries which uh, which can help you to quickly develop your models and you know get get uh, your application or use case implemented but uh, yeah so coming back to my previous topic on uh, how do i how do these heterogeneous devices or heterogeneous uh, uh, models uh, how do i convert that into a single model so now i can have multiple implementation or, or these devices have, can have a mul different kind of an implementation or on, on different uh, devices but uh, there's a one one uh, uh, tool by uh, again supported by uh, open source community called onnx op open format for machine learning models which allows you which helps you convert any model into a, a standardized model so that beat whatever device beat i'm sending something on the cloud something on the device i'm using whatever uh, you know training frameworks here i should be able to use a similar model this is this i believe one good approach uh, though it still needs uh, i believe that still it, i think it is still evolving but but uh, this is one one of the good good approach that will help us design future uh, machine learning algorithms or federated learning algorithms uh, so that 
so what it helps you with is is more of interruptibility without without uh, knowing who whom I am going to work with it. And it also at the same time gives you a huge amount of hardware acceleration. When I say huge amount, which means it supports CPU, it supports GPU, it supports FPGA. I don't really have, as a developer, I really don't have to worry about that. I can just convert my my model in, uh, into ONX supported model and then send it to my device or vice versa. If I'm receiving something on, from sending something from my device, I, I can convert that into ONX and then send it out to my training framework. So that way at least I will be able to you know, design my algorithm or implement my algorithm is much faster and without much hassle. Okay, uh, coming to uh, how this overall system will look like or how we can you know, leverage a federate learning kind of an algorithm or kind of an architecture with my 5G networks. This is, I have tried to put together different blocks. Uh, I think it's too much of, uh, you know, different blocks on a single screen at too, too, too much to discuss here. But let me just quickly touch upon, uh, I will try to touch upon different aspects of the entire network and how, how these things will, will work and how will they help you uh, to design an overall system. Now, as we briefly, uh, talked about uh, uh, the kind of devices will be there in the network, right? Now, I have say this uh, vehicles, then I, so if I have a vehicle network, these vehicles can talk to each other, they will have an edge platform, edge applications, uh, which which uh, might be doing uh, telematics engine or, or analytics engine, and on top of that you have your AI ML application and your ML model. Now, they what they will do is they will just use a 5G connectivity. Okay, but before I get into that, but, but first let me explain the uh, uh, overall architecture. So typically what you have in a 5G network is you have your telco platform. Uh, these days everybody's talking about the cloud platform. You, conventionally, they have a bare metal uh, platform. So now, Eventually, you will see you have a cloud platform. Underlying you have Kubernetes, Docker, OpenStack, bare metal as a service also architecture, and multiple hardware accelerations. So, which will be creating a baseline for your hardware or, or platform. And then on top of it, you have the radio access network, <clears throat> which now we have started seeing you no know, much 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 more disaggregation, so that I can support multiple uh, different kind of devices, different kind of uh, vendors to, to, to connect to. And on top of that, you have this edge platform. Now, Orion is another alliance who's, who's driving this, this initiative, uh, which ensures that you have a framework to define, uh, oh, sorry, framework to deploy your applications with accelerated data path. And then you have typical management system and OSS VSS on top of it. And then you have Another key component is coming into the picture is machine learning op, op, uh, operations and uh, uh, management uh, to, to help you deploy those certain applications here. And then you have the orchestration engine, the uh, network function managers and infrastructure managers. So this overall creates the overall architecture of a network with, with 5G and how these devices would be connecting is through my 5G uh, radio channel links. Now, in this case, my say, let's say, I have this vehicle who who has all uh, the compute to to run all the heavy lifting algorithms on its own. It can run that and just share the model. Now, with with this with the application which is running on my cloud. Now, in this case, what happens is I can design an application. I might have a requirement of an application which I don't want to deploy somewhere on the cloud, but I want to have it on-prem. So for example, in the factory automation, right? So in factory automation, what is this? Uh, they talk about, I need something which is on-prem. So I can deploy my cloud component within my premises next to my radio so that I can reduce the overall latency. So if I, I need a use case where my latency is of my utmost importance, I can deploy it 
near, near to my RAN itself, right? Now, so let's assume a scenario uh, where I have multiple other sensors. What they will do is, excuse me, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so what they will do is, rather than running this entire content on them, they will just send the data and my ML application running here will take care of that. Right. So, so idea is how do I leverage what level of edge I should be leveraging to, to run my algorithm? How can I break that in this entire AI algorithm or ML algorithm in such a way that I can use the compute of my local device or my edge device or my far edge, which is somewhere in the cloud, I should be able to design. So, Moving on, uh, okay, so moving on, before I jump into a demo, let me uh, also take a minute to talk about on edge, edge uh, device. I, I think I briefly just spoke about it. So when I say edge, uh, edge has multiple meanings. It does not really just mean the device edge or network edge, but how, how, of, how much I can break my network in such a way that I can, you know, reduce the latency of overall network and uh, and uh, you know process my data closer to the network or closer to the device without choking my network bandwidth. So to 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 uh, uh, you know to showcase what we have uh, you know experimented so far in my lab, I'll I'll show you a quick demo. Mm. So idea is. How do I take care of my emergency vehicles, right, in on a on a busy road, without impacting my traffic and leveraging my uh, federated learning? Uh, look, this kind of an architecture. So what I say, okay, let's assume there's an accident on the road. It will immediately reach out to the server, uh, hospital server, for asking for uh, uh, an ambulance. What will it do? Uh, so technically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, you know, reaching out to my app server somewhere on the cloud. So it will go and talk to my master uh, traffic controller. It will run some analytics. So basically it is doing its, it is doing the heavy lifting part there and it is finding the way for the ambulance to go from point A to point B in a, in a minimal time. So where, what I'm doing is I'm right, right at this point of time, I'm doing all the, you know, algorithm running in my, my cloud, cloud uh, server itself. Then I will intimate my uh, um, hospital to, you know, uh, with, with the uh, complete route to run from point A to point B. Hospital will notify the ambulance. Now, now here comes the important part. This is where the ambulance is. Now, ambulance knows I have, I have to go from point A to point B. It will be not only, you know, uh, running, running certain intelligence in, in itself, but it will be at the same time, it will be talking to the network to get the current condition of the road so that it, if it has to read out in real time, it should be able to do that. But, but, but at the same time, what this controller traffic controller would do is it will try to reach out to the edge server for all the identified cells in, in the entire route, say from point A, let's assume, sorry, my cursor. Yeah, so from here to here. Now, if I have one cell, it will reach out to the cell saying, okay, uh, this is the ambulance coming your way. Based on your current traffic, can you please ensure that my uh, ambulance reaches there without any uh, hundreds and it should be able to take the fastest uh, route. So what it does is I run some part of my, you know, analytics on my edge server to avoid uh, everything pushing on the devices. I find, okay, this is uh, the current situation of my network. I have so many, so many vehicles on each junction. And then what would it take to, you know, move them around without impacting their routes? So what will it do is it will get some policies from the top uh, based on these policies, it will go and 
ask the network to increase the bandwidth to take care of all the messages which will be you know suddenly there will be surge in the message because there is some some emergency situation so there will be like a lot many devices suddenly all these devices will start communicating because now they are they have they are identity based on their sensors they will be identifying okay there is some certain emergency situation happen uh it will start reporting it to the network server and it will start reporting it to the devices all these devices like the uh, infrastructure devices so what it does is it talks to all infrastructure devices guide them to run some you know algorithm locally to identify the traffic on the junction and route them accordingly so once it does it my ambulance reach from point a to point b without much hindrance uh it looks much easier on the screen but 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 uh, frankly speaking uh, this uh, algorithm we are not still able to you know make it perfect we are still working on this uh, uh, you know uh, algorithm but 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 having said that this is more of an experimental algorithm not is something that we are patenting or something this is just to see how i can you know break down my processing into three different layers i at the cloud at my edge at my you know devices what would it make sense what kind of processing would it make sense to run at what level so uh, before i go to qa let me take a few minutes and quickly want to show you uh, uh, one one video of or simulation that we have done so you can see on the screen a typical city scenario and i run i trigger an event let's say i just picked up a point so as soon as i do that that's all this processing happens in real time and my ambulance is on my way that now you can see if you have noticed uh, let me stop the video for a minute or oh, let me click to go through now if you have noticed this all the lights has turned into green and the lights here on the left side are red to avoid any traffic on on uh, the path of the ambulance so ambulance at this particular time it's not only just talking to infrastructure but if uh, if you see all these lines the bigger lines this so these are the lines where my vehicles are talking to the network they are exchanging data lot of data and my ambulance is also exchanging data so see so if if you notice all these lines are nothing but just a lot of communication happening between them them <clears throat> so this is the pick up point it picked up the assume that it has picked up the patient and it is on the way back to the hospital so the entire route from point a to point b and point b to point a it has ensured that the traffic is minimal or no traffic at all so that ambulance doesn't have to slow down at all so there's a huge amount of processing being go going around in in this uh, context within uh, within uh, multiple uh, so coming back to the slides i think this this with this i would like to uh, take up all the sorry uh, questions uh, let me go back uh, to the presentation and i will here i will stop sharing so uh, if you have any questions let me see if i have any yeah i think i have few questions around uh, um, we are left with only 5 6 minutes but let me try to see uh, uh so first question is from karthik karthik uh, karthik uh, unfortunately no uh, the algorithm that we are working Mm, is not going to be open source because that is part of uh, the TCS. Uh, but yes, I am trying to work with my management too and my legal to see if I can open source that. But that that will time time will take. Tell. Not sure if I will be able to do that. Tata vehicles. I'm sure there will be, but I'm I cannot. I am not very. Uh, uh, i i mean i'm not very uh, confident about that but i'm sure there will be because each every every uh, automotive company are working on auto uh, 
you know on autonomous vehicles but are they using autograde linux or not i am not sure about that what are the service providers for 5g uh, okay service provider for 5g are limited at this point of time as i mentioned earlier because 5g is just catching up and you will see a lot of service providers uh, which, uh, which will be coming up in in next couple of you know uh, years coming by uh, i think ericsson vodafone i mean from service provider sorry service provider would be vodafone or at&t or verizon they have started deploying 5g network across the world or for that matter even if you look at the japan rakuten is one who is deploying who has deployed uh, 5g network so similarly we will be uh, uh, seeing a lot of 5g network in coming future with the support for b2x as well so they are implementing i know uh, b2x uh, in in the network and they would be supporting these these kind of use cases for sure uh, any projection on when we can see 5g devices in indian market uh, i see when you say 5g devices if you are referring to mobile phone i think um, vivo has recently launched one uh, in indian market and i believe there's another one even oneplus has launched one samsung has launched their 5g devices in the india market i think there are couple of them are already there but it will take some time uh, for india market to uh, you know adopt 5g because as you might have read that the spectrum is, itself is not assigned so it will take couple of years before i can say okay my india market is 5g ready so it will eventually that will happen but it may take some time okay uh, i think we still have 3 minutes left uh, Okay. If no more questions, I think we can uh, stop broadcasting. No. How do I stop broadcast? Ah, okay. Yeah. So okay, I'll wait for another two minutes before I stop broadcast. Uh, I know if any questions. Okay, I think that's uh, if no more questions. I think we can stop the broadcast. Thank you, everyone, for joining this session, and uh, stay safe, stay home, and take care of your loved ones. Thank you so much. Bye.